Welcome back to Bits Be Trippin'. Say it ain't so, one week and another video. I kid, we got a great video in store for you today. For all you GPU miners out there, how about a new BBT case? Catered to fit some of those nice new 750 Ti's. Couple that with a detailed riser comparison. And this is a pretty full episode. We also threw in a grid seed review highlighting the GC3355 grid seed chip and one of their applications. Now we're going to wrap eight of those bad boys in, of course, the BBT's fashion, putting it in a custom case. I think you'll like it. Closing out the episode, we'll do the cryptocurrency of the week. We have chosen Feathercoin for this week give you a good highlight of a great community a coin that's been around for a while and one that we've been hashing since the beginning so hang in there welcome to episode 15 this is your host carter let's get into this so very first we have this new case that we decided to put together for those new 750 ti's that were the smaller form factor that didn't have that overhang that would fit on some of the other cases that we had built and it just wasn't the size of the cards being only six inches it was also the fact that the interface went all the way to the edge of the PCB. So even if we wanted to create a closer lip for it, it would have really nowhere to set. So the BBT 2.0 case changed a bit. It went a full 16 by 12 by 12, making more of a cubic design and about a one and a half inches between those graphics card mounting spots. With the change in the design, we decided to do a little something a little different and stair step these cards, creating a few different channels that they could go onto. With that, we had to make some adjustments for you could get down a screwdriver and adjust those ones on the lower decks. Overall, we were pretty happy with this design. It's a little shorter and it looks a little cooler. Tell us what you think. Put your comments below on that. Now let's move on to some more of the details of these actual particular cards. These EVGA GTX 750 Ti's are capable right out of the box at around 260 kilohash each. They can reach around 312 to 330 if you do some adjustments into the BIOS. Now you can, with the latest drivers from NVIDIA, bump these up to about a plus 135 to the core. Now, what we saw with these cards was a little more power draw, but right there around 280 to 290 kilohash, which is not too bad for this. For all these cards together, they were pulling right around 480 watts from the wall. Now over the course of a day, this thing was rock star stable. We'll put this config inside of the description below, but this thing held right around 1500 to 1600 kilohash, no problem. Now this is running the cards at essentially stock. We didn't even overclock the offset. The offset gave us a little more, brought it up to about 1700, but it was about 510 to the watts. Overall, we couldn't argue with what we were getting. We got pretty good efficiency from the CX600 that we had in the rig, and the machine was pretty much dead quiet. Now, let's go ahead and move over to the riser comparison. This is something that has been intriguing me for quite a while. I see lots of comments about what risers to use, what some risers are better than others, some provide better throughput, and circling just on the throughput question made me want to do a few different tests. So we decided to take each riser through 3D Mark's graphics card test. We wanted to really tax the bus on each one of those risers and then see if there was any quality difference of throughput. First, we started with a 1X riser in the 16X slot. You can see here, Firestorm landed at 5535, the gate test 8482, Ice Storm 67884, and overall, 5,535. Now next up was a USB powered riser with a 20 centimeter run. Now in the first two tests, it was a little slower than the ribbon, but came alive in the ice storm test with a 68294. Next up after that was the new AS Rock BTC Card X1 Revision 1.02. Now this runs a little different and I'm gonna highlight this card for a second. This actually is driven by a couple SATA connections and then a power adapter that essentially runs that power up from the PCI Express straight up to the actual daughter boy that connects to the bottom of the graphics card. And looking at these results, the stats weren't really hardly any different than the powered USB and the 1X ribbon. Bottom line, they were all doing about the same throughput. Now finally, we wrapped up this test using a full ribbon 16X non-powered riser, just to see if a full connection, even boosting it up there by just a few inches, what was the result? And you can see here, while not groundbreaking, definitely faster. 5874 and 8751, and that much larger, almost 10,000 difference 
distance on the ice storm and an overall score that was higher than the rest of them. So we'll put this table up here for a second to let you take a gander at this and look at the differences. No question a full 16X riser is faster. And more importantly, when it comes to just bandwidth and bus, there's hardly any difference between the ribbon through the USB and the new ASRock BTC card that we tested. With regards to hashing, if we take a quick shot of our episode 14, where we actually had four of these different risers in the board, all hashing the exact same. The board, the cards, the software, it did not matter. It still hashed cycle for cycle, damn near the same. Now that we got that cleared up, let's go ahead and get into what most of you probably have skipped through for the grid seed review. Now, while most of you are probably aware of the grid seed, this GC3350, chip, which for lack of better words, shook the mining industry in early December, started to really show its presence in late January, early February, for those that were lucky enough to get a handle on a few of them. These little buggers show up with a five chip board and a small aluminum circular fan. Pretty hard to miss. These things first appeared on a post from BitcoinTalk.org on December 3rd of 2013. Now the basic white paper of this is going to tell you that they're high performance and low power power SHA-256 processors designed by GridChip with advanced technology and highly integrated design targeted to provide multiple function and low-cost solutions for SHA-256 and script applications. In English, with the right power supply, this little bugger will do both Litecoin and Bitcoin. However, most now just use it for Litecoin. Bottom line, using it for Litecoin uses far less electricity. One of these devices by themselves will use up to 60 watts of power if you're trying to do BTC at the same time, while they'll use less than 10 watts of power by doing LTC. Now, what do you get from that? A fully adjustable clock that out of the gate does around 330 kilohertz. Now you can software mod that and adjust that clock speed up enough to get about 380 kilohash out of it. But there are plenty of tutorials out there. And if you're a skilled surgeon of solder, you could turn around and turn this guy into about 450 kilohash. So you're probably like, why is all this techno bobble matter anything to me? What this matters is how much power per kilohash you're getting out of something like this. This thing is focused purely on script coin. So you're looking at feather coin, you're looking at doge coin. Coin. And of course, its original target, Litecoin. Now you couple that with out of the box about as fast as a 7850 and overclocked about as fast as an R9270 for seven watts. So originally when we ordered these, I wanted eight of them, mainly because we wanted to build a really cool looking case and I wanted four on one side, four on another. But then we realized for a proper review, we need to only have six of these guys in here. So we pulled a couple out, give you some vantage point inside the case that we had built for it, and then see what this thing can do compared to another GPU rig. So now you've heard some of the marketing stats of it. Let's dig into seeing what this thing can really do. So what we're doing is remoting in to the Raspberry Pi that comes with the device if you order it as a package. Now remoting into this OS is very simple. You plug in essentially your ethernet connection, you give it power, it boots up, you get to it through your web browser, connect to it, you see a dash worth all your miners cooking. Now out of the gate, these things are ready to rock. You plug them in, it's literally plug and play, and we'll get into that in a second. But you can see right here, six of these miners hanging out right at 2.04 mega hash locked in. Now again, these are in stock form, so a little over the 330 spec. So if we were to slap in the last two in there, we'd bump up to about 2.72 mega hash for this 8x rig. Now it's nice to note that the Raspberry Pi that's included with this package, you could technically take this up to around 20 to 24 grid seeds per Raspberry Pi. This technically could be customized to support a 20 port USB hub plugged into the Raspberry Pi. And all that's gonna happen is you're gonna see more grid seeds show up on this dashboard. It is literally plug and play. It's probably the easiest thing that we've done hands down coming to mining. Now, as you're probably seeing in our little trailer, there we picked these up from finalhash.com really good bunch of guys they worked out with us to get a discount code for you guys prices change all the time on the site but it's a very good discount go out there check it out now when we reach out to these guys to see about getting one of these grid seeds we wanted to make sure that it was a very simple process you guys know my videos I'm trying to show you a very simple process so what they put together is a complete turnkey package you get the Raspberry Pi the OS all the cable 
cabling that you need, the power brick, the whole damn thing. Out of the box works. You literally take it out of the box, you plug it in, you remote in via the web browser to the IP that the Raspberry Pi grabs. You add your miner info, you hit start, it starts cooking. Now some final thoughts about this five grid seed thick device. Overall, I can't complain. The device works out of the box as it says it does, and it's been pretty much perfect. The only thing I can mention about it that I would offer as a warning is if you get one of these devices and you're trying to make a, your own case or your own stack, you have to be careful when you're plugging the USB connection. It's held by four anchored solder points and it will break if you push too hard. I know from experience we did break a few of them when we were trying to do some different designs with them. So be careful when you're using them. They work fine. They are pretty solid but you will break them if you push too hard. Now in closing with the grid seed review, be sure to take a look at Final Hash. And of course, if you're gonna order something, use that code BBT on the coupon code. Save yourself some money. Now let's digress into the cryptocurrency of the week. And this week we're featuring Feathercoin. Now, when you look at all the different cryptocurrencies that are out there, the alternative currencies based off of script and script in and script chain and all the other derivatives that are popping up, Feathercoin's kind of an OG. It has a great caring community in the UK. They do regular meetups and really talk and love every bit about Feathercoin. Now it's basic concept and what it was trying to provide is essentially a local currency with a global reach. The basic core principles or core dependencies on any altcoin of trying to provide some store of value and an additional blockchain out there that if anything was ever expanded across blockchains that Feathercoin would be nice, vested, and distributed uh, to provide such a feature. But bottom line, Feathercoin provides a great community, a very quick to respond development crew, and ultimately a good following. The coin's also got something going for it that not a lot of other altcoins can actually say. It's listed on BTCE. This is something that I know that Blackcoin and or even Dogecoin would probably love to get on. Now, over the last year, Feathercoin's done pretty well. It had its peak right around the same time that everybody else had their peak in mid-December, and it really kind of came down with about everybody else relative to where it was against Bitcoin. Make sure it's part of your portfolio. Pick up some Feathercoin. You can pick it up on BTCE. You can pick it up on Cripsy. Several exchanges out there that have it. It's been around for a long time. It's not going anywhere. Now, I think that's going to wrap up this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please put your comments down below. We can get those answered. We do look at those comments. We will respond to you as quick as possible. Now, we're going to keep you thirsty and begging for more. We're trying to bring you some R7265s in an upcoming episode, along with that 295X2 from AMD, that new dual GPU card, which I think is going to be killer for script in, really targeting that script chain, script in, GPU mining love. I think you guys will love that. If we can put more than one of them in a rig, we'll go ahead and try that if we can get our hands on one and then come out with you probably with another ASIC rig towards the end of the month. Make sure you retweet, like us, share us to your friends. Let's get this known, get this knowledge out there. And finally, thank you for all of you folks that actually donate in the shadows. We do have donation pages there. You guys see those and donate. We take that to make sure that we get you the latest hardware and do these reviews. Thank you very much for that support. Stay tuned. The bitch be trippin'